So I had this idea to make a project out of sawdust. At the end of every woodworking project, you're left with two extra things. The first thing you're left with is a bunch of random cut-off scraps that you tell yourself you want to save because you'll use them one day, but then the pile just keeps getting larger and larger and is soon overwhelming and the pile just continues to grow and soon you have decade-old offcuts just sitting there and you still haven't done anything with them yet, but you continue to collect more and amass a giant pile of random wood scraps. <sighs> I'm not projecting, you're projecting. But the second thing you're left with is a lot of sawdust. Now, I could make a project out of all those old wood scraps, but then that would ruin the perfectly good pile of wood I spent so long building. So instead, I'm gonna make a project out of sawdust. There's actually a lot of interesting uses for sawdust that I learned about, but I want to try something a little bit different, inspired by MDF. Now, MDF is essentially sawdust and other scrap wood that's milled up with glue and heat pressed into usable boards again. I want to try and do something similar and create a pot for a plant. And what's really cool and fun about this technique is you can use it to make pretty much anything you want. So here's what I designed so far. I've been a lot more inspired to try and grow plants again ever since I finished my infinite terrarium. So I wanna make something cool for these plants to grow into. One big problem though is I made way too many different iterations for this. So there's kind of a lot here. I'm just gonna select my two favorite designs to move forward with, toss away the rest, and then I'll speak more about the design specifics on these in just a minute. Before jumping into the final project though, I wanted to try a small version first so that I can test my process out on it. I started out by making a little mold of various subtractions and additions to the walls, just to see if there would be any problems with that. For the mixture filling the mold, I wanted to generally use items that everyone has so that they could try making their own if they wanted to. I made it as close as I could to how some MDF products are made, generally with 82% wood fiber, 9% glue, 8% water, and 1% paraffin wax, but I'm kind of just ignoring that because I don't have that and it's a small amount, so I'm kind of hoping that's not a critical component to all of this. But then I stuffed that all into the mold and then came back in 48 hours to see how it turned out. Now, I've already learned an immense amount from just this one small scale test. Like first off, I designed in a little weep hole on the side for excess glue to drain out of. Turns out that is not necessary at all because the watery glue found its way out of the mold no problem, which is fine because this doesn't need to be watertight. The other important thing that I learned from this is that I should have used mold release. This thing has turned into an absolute brick, so there's really only one tool that I have that can help get this unstuck now. So I grabbed a screwdriver and then I pried at all of the seams to try and get this thing apart and the inside is underwhelming. My granola bar of a mold was still pretty damp and broke apart very easily when handled. It looks like there was not enough airflow to really dry this whole thing out and there's still tons of little gaps in here. I'm realizing that the only real research I did for this project was a quick Wikipedia search for the components of MDF, and I never actually learned the process or if the percentages were even volume-based or weight-based. So I'm gonna try adding in more glue next time, as well as grinding up the wood shavings that I have and making them smaller like actual dust. With this knowledge, I felt a lot more confident going bigger now, so I made a mold for the first planter to try out. This one is a four part mold, and I'm hoping that I can take off parts of it during the drying process to give the mold better access to air and to dry it out quicker and better. Now for my first real test, I mixed up everything together as I did before, but adding in a little bit more glue this time, and I mixed it all until it seemed like everything was just sticking together. I started to pack the mold full of the mixture I made, compressing the sawdust down more and more each time. It took about three of these bowls to get this mold filled to the top, and after that was done, I put on all of the clamps to hold all the walls in place, and then left that to dry for about six hours, and then after that, I came back and I began the process of slowly removing parts of the mold. First with the center part, and then I waited about another six hours, came back and removed one half of the mold to expose one side, and then shortly after, came back and removed the entire thing. Now even removing it at this stage, it still needed just a little more time to dry, so I just left it for a couple days to become fully dry and solid. So it's been a while now and this thing is fully dry. Even the original mold that I had, this thing became an absolute rock after a while. So I think the key to all of this is to just give it time to dry. Now this mold actually turned out insanely well. You may look at the top and say, Rob, you didn't even fill it up all the way. It looks terrible, you're an idiot. And I would say, <laughs> you're harsh, but fair. Now the nice thing about this is, at the end of the day, this is still sawdust. It can be cut, it can be sanded, anything that normal wood can do to finish up and look nice and clean, this can do as well. So this is just a simple run through the bandsaw to get it perfect. Now there are a couple tiny changes that I would like to make to this now that I'm physically holding it in my hand. It doesn't fully match up to what I had in my head. On this next version of the mold, I am still gonna keep it pretty simple because on this version, I want the wood to stand out more because I think I actually have a really cool idea of something to do. This is a tub of sawdust I have, and the idea I want to use on this is actually shown right here. 
The darker layers almost creates these sedimentary layers of sawdust telling a story about the history of the shop, and I just think that's so cool. Now, I want to take that idea and essentially make this kind of like a marbled wood. The idea is to use the darker material to create little layer lines throughout this so it becomes more than just one species of sawdust in here. And I have no idea if this will even turn out, but I think that that idea sounds really cool, so I have very high hopes for this thing. It didn't turn out well. I should not have had such high hopes for that. I was so confident that I was just gonna nail this thing in one single shot, but the thing is, well, this thing looks like it's a giant squished Fig Newton bar. The marble effect between these two colors is a lot more harsh than I thought it would be, so on my next attempt, I'm just gonna try and blend it a little bit better. This one might be able to be fixed if I can soften up the edges a little bit with some stain between the two, but we'll see how that actually turns out. Also, that's how I did a lot of this darker color. I don't know what magical properties I thought I had to be able to sort and organize sawdust by color, so it's a lot easier to just cheat. While I work on the mixture for the next attempt at this thing, future narrator me will tell you a little bit about this mold because this one's actually really cool. This new mold I like so much more. It has less facets to it, and I think that is just more clean overall. But the neat thing that I designed into this mold is that it's actually reversible. When playing around to get a shape that I liked, I landed on this one, and I liked it in both orientations. So this mold allows for the top and bottom to switch places to create two different end products from one single mold. I also learned that packing it from the bottom is way more helpful since you actually have something to fill up and press it down on, instead of just trying to pack it up against the walls like the previous mold. One day though, I will remember to design a handle on this mold lid to lift it up, but today is not that day. So I've just been screwing in a large bolt to pull it out when needed. So this is the attempt at mixing and blending the colors a little bit more, and I think that I actually like this one even less than the other one. This one just does not look good. There's no real rhyme or reason to anything, and it kind of just looks like a mistake. So I'm gonna go back to doing mainly one color. I have one last idea of mixing these two colors together to try and get something I like, but if this one dries in 12 hours and it comes out and I still don't like it, then I'm probably just gonna go back to one single color for this. Okay, now we are actually starting to get somewhere. This final test is a lot closer and more along the lines of what I was actually going for on this project. I landed on doing just a single color tear right through it, which I think looks pretty cool. And it's just enough to give it that little bit of character, but still remain clean and not messy like the other ones are. Now the original idea for this project was going to be to make two different designs for this, but I figured since I've already changed this so much since the original design, it would be cool to do a reverse of this mold. And so that means essentially inverting all of the colors as well with the other orientations so that they become essentially a pair when you have them together. Now the next step for these two is going to be the finishing process to get them all nice and cleaned up. But while I work on that, I wanted to tell you about how you can actually own a set of these, as well as answer a request that some people have had. For some time now, people have been asking me or reaching out to see if they can buy a project or the project files, and I have not had a good answer until now. I have set up an Etsy store where you can get the digital files that I use to make a lot of my projects. They will contain all of the files and 3D models that you will need to cut, print, or just measure and recreate the project yourself. Now these files are not meant to be an instruction book on how to assemble everything like a Lego manual, but rather provide you with all of the components that have already been designed and working files to make your own just as you've watched me make mine. That means for something like the laser cut tables, all of those files I used are already laid out and ready to cut. For something like the infinite terrarium, the laser cut files, the 3D printed files, they're all there. And on each of these, I'm also including my 3D built model as well. So you can see how everything comes together to shed more light on these build videos if you want to try and make your own. This is just meant as another way that you can help support the channel while getting something cool in return for those of you that are looking for that type of stuff. For this project too, the molds that I designed will be up there as well if you're wanting to print your own. But if you're also not wanting to make your own and you just want a finished product, I will have that type of stuff hosted there as well. For this project, I have enough sawdust left to make a limited run of only five sets of planters. So if you thought they were cool and you wanted a set of your own, the link to buy them at my shop and all of the other stuff will be in the description down below. Anything purchased there will just go right back into this channel and help make bigger and better projects. So thanks for checking it out. These are turning out great so far, and it's weird that just a couple of days ago, these were sawdust. They cleaned up so nice after the sanding, and now they have these crisp edges, and I'm excited to get some finish on these guys and see what their final texture looks like. These things just feel oddly good to hold, and I don't know why my brain likes it so much. 
These things almost look like stone after the sanding process, which is cool. And that just kind of adds back into that sedimentary layer character that I was talking about earlier. But that will fade a little bit with the addition of polyurethane to keep these things nice and protected. Before I do that though, I just need to finish out the middle a little bit more. Now these are meant to hold plants in the end and these are going to get a lot of coats of poly on them, but even still, I don't think that I want them in constant contact with damp soil. I don't actually really think that it's a problem at all, to be honest, but I'm really confident in these, but just for the sake of guaranteed longevity, I'm adding in a little bit of a 3D printed sleeve in the middle, just so that there is a barrier between them. Now, I'm sure that the big question on this project will be how everyone reacts to the final texture. To me, I actually like the little pitting and the packed sawdust texture because it's a byproduct of the process and despite its look, this thing is perfectly smooth. If you didn't really like that, you can again just fill it with more glue and sawdust, but I like mine so I'm keeping it that way. While this project is inspired by MDF, one of my biggest fears going into this is that it was going to come out looking like MDF and just be kind of normal, boring, and bland, which thankfully it did not. This is definitely different and the other big question here is does something like this even sell? I have no idea, but I just wanted to try something out that is different than the normal uses of sawdust and just try and make something more unique with it. Hopefully maybe inspiring one of you all to try out the process of this or something like it, because I feel like this is just beginning to scratch the surface of what you can do. You can mix in other pigments. You can use a range of sawdust scraps. You can use maybe different types of glue that will yield different results. There's just so many different opportunities with something like this. And the fact that you can make pretty much anything with this is exciting for something like sawdust, which is often overlooked or just discarded. If you end up making something, please tag me in it over on Instagram. I genuinely would love to see what people can make, but for now, I will just leave you with the final product. Thanks for watching.